The end has come. But with the end is the beginning of the next journey, the next step, the 10,000 year war, the king, the yellow king, the army that is unspoken, the realm between realms. It's all beginning to make sense. Now pull yourself back, because just before we jump into this, I have to warn you that this video is going to contain absolute massive spoilers from the end and the death, part one, part two, and part three. If you haven't read those books, you're currently reading them, and you don't want to be spoiled, then leave now, because this is your first and only warning. So what we have at the end of the Siege of Terror is the Emperor Constantine Valdor, Rogel Dawn, Sanguinius, along with their followers, all teleport towards the Vengeful Spirit. Each one of these legendary figures is separated. Dawn is put into a desert where he's fighting Khorne by reading him the Geneva Convention. You have Sanguinius that is split from his Blood Angel sons fighting against the darkness who eventually ends up fighting Horus and then skinned alive like a chicken and nailed to the wall. You have the Emperor turning into the Dark King himself and then brought back from the madness by Elenius Pius, but then we have the legendary figure Constantine Valdor, who's fighting his own war upon the vengeful spirit. And for those of you who don't know, Valdor carries a very special weapon, the Apollyon Spear. This spear was wielded by the Emperor of Mankind himself during the Unification Wars and given to Valdor when he became chief among the Adeptus Custodes. Now, what this weapon allows is when it cuts an object or it cuts flesh, it allows the wielder of that spear to see the truth. Like you can see a true demon's name. It gives you a lot of power. And this is where the big thing happens on the Vengeful Spirit. Because in the end of the death part two, we have a scene where Valdor is fighting through these hordes of demons in the darkness of the Vengeful Spirit. But on his tactical loadout in his system's helmet, he sees the marker of Abaddon. And now, in the end of the death part three, we absolutely get to see that battle. Now, before you lose it and say, how can Abaddon take on um, Valdor, the chief custodian, you know, this legendary figure, he is quite juiced up on some chaos power thanks to Erebus at this time. So please bear that in mind. He's like kind of, you know, uh, Lufa, you know, he's roided. He's roided up on the chaos juices. So he's able to stand toe to toe with Valdor. But the main thing is, and this is where it's all going to change. During this fight, Valdor hits Abaddon. He pierces his flesh, cuts his flesh. And like I said, this spear grants the user the truth. And when he hits Abaddon, he sees the next 10,000 years of what's to come. The ruin, the disaster, the nightmare, the Black Crusades, chaos itself, building power and combating the Imperium and humanity. Now the jewel itself more or less fades away because there's a like anti-gravitical thing that slings everyone up in the air and everyone goes their separate ways and stuff like that. But the fallout of this now is one of the reasons why I now think 110% that Valdor is the king in yellow. We all know that Valdor leaves after the Siege of Terror. Once the Emperor is entombed upon the Golden Throne, Valdor mysteriously vanishes. No one's heard from him again. And this is because Valdor knows what's coming. Valdor has seen into the future. He knows what the Imperium is going to be facing over the next 10,000 years. He knows the darkness that is going to consume the light of 
the Imperium and the Imperial Dream. So what does Valdor do? I'll tell you what he does, right? He goes away and he makes his own armor. An armor that can, can combat the darkness. We know that this is happening. We've seen the Eisenhorn, Ravener, and Beckery series. We know the world between worlds where this army is being made. An army of blanks, custodies, space marines being built in in secret, right? This entire craft world that want to get to this and destroy it. Chaos themselves are trying to get to it and destroy it. But in secret, the king in yellow has been building his forces. This is the only way to combat chaos. An army of blanks. It all makes sense. It's all starting to make bloody sense with all the shenanigans that's been happening the rift itself splitting the galaxy in twain demon primarchs coming back magnus mortarian angron soon fulgrim is gonna sliver his way into the story okay yes we have some loyalist primarchs coming back but the tide of chaos is growing ever stronger and just when the imperium needs a savior of course it's gotta be it has to be. The king in yellow has to appear with an army that chaos will fear. An army of blanks that can combat the very soul of chaos itself. All you have to do, brothers, is follow the breadcrumbs that Dan Abner is leading us. And this is going to go into the next big book, which we all bloody want pandemonium this has to be the big book the king in yellow book the big spoiler what is going on between the world between worlds the blind karma the custodians the space marines it's all about to be revealed and i think this is going to shake us to our very core i love it i absolutely love it it's all started to come together when did we start on this foil road the theories the predictions the foilness it's all now started to make sense the king in yellow we know now why valdor has chose the road he chose he knows what's coming he's seen it the spear has shown him we need this armor we require this armor if we're going to combat the threat of chaos if you don't believe me then believe the foil crown, for it will never lead you astray.